Okay, my friends, this is going to be really interesting. This is Roger, Mud Fossil University, looking at quantum mechanics that nobody understands and is admitted by all of them. They admit it. They don't understand it. Listen to this. It's a subject that's kind of hard to follow intuitively. And the good news is that nobody can follow it intuitively. Uh, Richard Feynman, one of the big uh, figures in physics, used to say no one understands quantum mechanics. So, in some sense, the pressure is off for you guys because I don't get it and you don't get it and Feynman doesn't get it. The point is, here's my goal. Right now, I am the only one who doesn't understand quantum mechanics. In about seven days, all of you will be unable to understand quantum mechanics. <laughs> It's right out of the horse's mouth. That's Yale University. But it's true. They don't understand it because you can't understand it with the standard model. It does not work. It does not work. Everything is a dipole. So why is dark matter such a hot topic? After decades of searching for dark matter coming up short, some researchers say we should just take the possibility of a new theory of gravity more seriously. No, gravity is the dark matter. Let me show you. All right, here's my claim. That right there is dark matter. That is light. We cre created this by using a venturi and crushing the fields of light together until they forced to present themselves as their energetic particles, giving off luminosity, showers of electrons, which I will show you in a second. And as the electrons left, it left the dark matter all by itself. This is where they're tied together. This would be called a gluon. Each side is a gluon, a black and a white. The white glows and shrinks, glows and shrinks, glows and shrinks as it goes through the air. Bang, 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 bang. Now, the black never changes. It's a fixed particle. Fermilab agrees with all of these statements I'm saying. If anybody can say no, and I'm going to tell you some, a story how this all happened and Don, Don Lincoln's involvement in this. Uh, this this goes back a very long time. I've shown these dark matter particles, and I've been excluded from from discussing it. All you ever see on his page is, if you have any questions, just ask. I asked, and they said, don't ask. Get out of here. you got too much information to be allowed to speak in our realm. And basically, that's what I was told. Leave it to us professionals. Don't ever contact us again. Okay, I'm going to try to do this respectfully as I can, but this has been many years going on here that I've known these particles exist. We showed it, and we could actually, I believe, get free energy because we created fission and fusion. And I've been excluded and told to stay away, and, and literally Don Lincoln called me a tinfoil hat guy. He says, you're a tinfoil hat guy, just get lost, basically. These are the particles that he's found. This is his, from his article right here. This is from Don Lincoln's own article. All right, it's called, What's the Point? There's the particles right there. <laughs> he says they're the same particles I'm talking about. And he says, oh, these are lepton standard model particles. They're all point particles. And all these different things about these particles trying to relate it to the standard model. It doesn't work. And then he agrees there is a quantum foam. Quantum foam is all the particles that are light. It's in space. Empty space isn't empty. No, it's not empty. We're, everything that's crushing through it is scrubbing. That's what's causing heat. Now, you saw Yale has no clue about quantum. I can guarantee you Don Lincoln has absolutely no clue what, whatsoever what particles are, what light is, what heat is, what cold is, what energy is at all. There's no clue. Because he sees the stuff is right in front of his face. He's looking at him right here and he doesn't understand what he saw. And I showed him our accelerator, which is nothing more than his accelerator, only ours works and it works excellently. They're using protons. We're using light much, much, much better. And they know that. They reconfigured the Large Hadron Collider to do exactly what we did after I showed them how to focus and squirt these particles. Only they still want to stay with the standard model, which does not work. Most successful theory ever. It's not successful at all. All of these particles aren't true whatsoever. Well, you, they can see them, but they don't mean anything. The only thing that exists is the W and Z bosons, the white particle and the black particle. Two of them together make a gluon, and two gluons together make a photon. That's it. End of the, of the new model, which is called 
dipole electron flood theory. So you saw the stuff that Fermilab is spouting off, which is just all completely wrong, and refuses to engage. That's what bothers me. And I found gravity in space, the Russians did. And at the same time, I copied Don Lincoln in when I was go talking to the Russians about the gravity they saw in space. And he poo-pooed the whole thing, made a big joke out of it. And then, then uh, he contacted me back. And the, I don't know if the Russians were copied in on it or not but he did co contact me back and it just made a big joke out of it oh, 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 oh. and I said no 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 here's all the stuff we did I'm showing the same particles you showed here's the same you work you did I can prove the things you've been saying that's it get lost basically that was it he said how did you photo how, how could you photograph that I said we use a smartphone they they're using them to photograph cosmic rays because of the luminosity and he said, no, no, you can't do that. And I showed him all the articles. And then he said, that's it. Forget about it. Leave it to us professionals. Don't ever contact us again. You're a tinfoil hat guy. And I've never been able to make contact with him since. You see that? They're talking about getting a whole 140 collisions every time they run one of these operations. We're squirting them out all day long, continuously, thousands and thousands a second. Every one of these Higgs fields is a collision. And then when we put them through this, we can harvest that. And we never stop colliding. It's a continuous pulsation of pushing, push, 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 which squirts these right through, and then they recombine right here. Well, they recombine right now in space, in, in, the, in the air. But we would s harvest them into a substrate. This would squirt all of those particles down into your wheels of your car into your heating of your home heaters and your lighting and every single thing can be done with this this is nothing more than raw energy it's atomic vapor you see this when don lincoln says how did you photograph i said we used the smartphones and then i sent him articles about this this goes back to 2014. this is not some off the wall person saying this this is uc irvine berkeley i mean now uh, you see Irvine in California, I guess they are. The silicon based sensors in smartphone cameras use the same principles as detectors at CERN and elsewhere to identify the particles. We are identifying muons and cosmic radiation energies. Simple as that. All right, you know, you, I'm sure you think, oh, this guy's crazy, he's bragging, he's had him shut down CERN. I'm not saying that, but I'm going to tell you right now. They didn't know how to focus these things, and they were not focusing them, and they were not getting any performance to speak of. And they have just shut it down and brought it back online with high luminosity. And what is luminosity? It's the measure of the number of potential collisions per surface unit over a given period of time, an essential indicator of an accelerator's performance. And guess what? How will the high luminosity LHC work? Increasing the luminosity means increase, increasing the number of collisions. They're saying they're going to get 140 collisions produced each time the particle bunches meet at the heart of the atlas compared to around 40 at present. So they're going up to 140 collisions each time they hit their particles head on. We're having hundreds of thousands of collisions a second. See, this, this is how they rate their glow. They see the biggest, glowiest things and they say, oh, that's a lot of energy. Well, yes, it is a lot of energy. And then they look for the tiniest little bits and pieces that fall off, and they say, that's a little tiny part. Here's another one that's very close. Here's another one. They end up with a zoo of particles, and that's all they have is debris. Now, you can't carry that around in a lunchbox. My device, yes, you could carry it around in a lunchbox and power your house, your car, boats. No grid required. Just carry it around. No danger whatsoever. It's only dividing light, and the light re rejoins almost instantaneously because the black is gravity it pulls the white back together so hard that that's what creates energy is the boom back together first of all it's a push the white against the other push but pulling back together appears to increase that potential thousands of times okay i think i've shown my case pretty well the muon is right here a muon neutrino 
when it is attached to the electron neutrino, they're just neutrinos, and there they are right now as neutrinos. When they separate and the muon goes on its way from Cheryenkov radiation, which means it hits another medium, which is what we did by forcing it into that venturi, crushing the fields together. Instead of hitting them head on, we crushed them together and squirted them right out. And the muons couldn't get through, so they had to go around. The electron shower squirted through and turned into those showers. Shown this very, very clearly, and we created them from photons, not billions of particles. We created them from these little tiny particles, and they smashed together as they went through the venturi, and they split apart. So we have created sterile muons, electron showers, muon neutrinos, electron neutrinos, and from what I can tell, it appears that all matter is made of these particles. I call them atomic vapor. Right? It's atomic vapor. This is the vapor of an atom, which is an electron. This is a little bit condensed vapor, which is a photon. It's just two electrons together, which gives it a form of stability. This is not. One side is extremely energetic and the other side is not energetic at all. This has a, 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 a symmetry of energy around it. And energy is always pushing and shoving back. Push to shove, push to shove. And that creates glow. The more glow, the more efficient a particle accelerator is. And ours is the most efficient particle accelerator that exists on the face of this planet today. Now, for my friend Don, this is a first ever again. We created magnetic monopoles. You break apart a, mag, a, a, a bar magnet and you get it's two bar magnets. You get 10 bar magnets. You get 50 bar magnets. You don't get like a north and a south pole. We did it though. Magnetism in bar magnets and electromagnets is not caused by magnetic monopoles. And indeed, there is no known experimental or observational evidence that magnetic monopoles exist. Oh, yes, there is. Not only that, those magnetic monopoles are gravity, the black ones. These are energy. These are gravity. And, he, and I'm proving it right here. Here's where we put it through the venturi. It divided fission back to fusion. Instantaneously back to fusion. So these are magnetic monopoles. They absolutely, no question whatsoever, they exist. They were attached. Now they are monopoles. See, it's all built around this focusing magnets. They made the thing focus so that it would hit head on, head to head. But they still just get debris. I said we focus them through a venturi and let them splash out. And we should be able to use the splash and harvest it in a solar collector and get free energy today. I mean today. I'm not talking. These things are on the shelf. Lasers and solar receivers and regulation systems, they're everywhere. We should be able to do this literally within weeks and have re free energy started to be produced for everywhere, for third world countries, for us, for firefighters, in the woods, hurricanes, tornadoes, floods, pump water, grow plants, run your cars, stop destroying the atmosphere. Not a bit of interest. This was what I first contacted Don Lincoln about. I said we saw a black hole in space. The Russians created one in zero gravity in a vacuum chamber with charged particles. This is just like light or any electricity hitting Earth. Earth is the gravity. It's the puller of all these particles. Earth is ground. That means any electric charge you put next to the Earth, boom, it'll go right into the Earth. You get static on you, bang, right into the earth. Electricity, boom, right into the earth. Lightning, boom, right into the earth. These particles are trying to get into the darkness here, which is the black hole, which is separated from these particles. And it can do that in space. And we are a ball in space. Nothing different than this, sucking electrons. All right, Don, that's my best shot. I'm going to go over it again for the thousandth time. This is the light. These are particles of light, which are photons. Photons have a mass. They are not massless, Don. They have a mass. They have your fixed particle. They have your glowy little point particle. Two of them back to back make up a photon. 
one of them is an electron will burn into you. They both contain the dark matter. That is the dark matter, and that is also gravity. And I can prove this. I can absolutely prove this. This is light. This is not protons hitting head-on. They smash huge particles and see just trash. We are shining light through a venturi, and it comes out like this. All right, see this? It actually comes in here as stacking up and creating the photons that are completely visible here. I believe it is accelerating, heading for the Venturi. Then as it stacks up, it slows down to just under the speed of light, which they say neutrinos do, which is what we have is the neutrinos, the black and the white, is the muon is the black, the white is the electron neutrino. And the black disassociates and becomes a sterile muon. The white turns into showers. Electron showers make electricity. The judge, the, 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 the um, efficiency of a particle accelerator is based on its luminosity. If that is not luminosity, I don't know what is. It came in here almost totally dark, and we wouldn't even see this at all, except that it's headed for the Venturi. That's when it starts to display. They're up here. And the only reason they're showing here now is because of the reverse radiation. The, the, it's called um, reverse EMF, electromotive force. It's pushing back against this so hard that the ones that you would never see start to glow, the tips of them, because they're being slammed against and this right here is fission and fusion. That's the only chance we have to get out of this alive. This planet is dying right now. There's the muon right there, the black ball. There's the electron neutrino, which I showed you was the white ball attached to that black ball. It turns into the showers. This is, this is from Don Lincoln. This is not from me. That's what they want to see. That's what they've been searching for. That's what they sp spend in billions of dollars to do the new budget for the upgrade to focus which I told them how to focus when I went to the University of, of um, Geneva and I showed them all these particles they were interested and then the next thing I know they shut down the particle accelerator they put in the 950 million dollars worth of magnets to focus these particles so they could hit head-on and now they're getting some good performance but it doesn't matter it's still just debris it's just trash there's nothing like we're doing. We are squirting this right onto a substrate. All we have to do is put a receiver right here. Beep. Splash this stuff on here, drive it straight down into a receiver. Just like this. And that should be able to be done within weeks. And I've been pushed back again so hard, I'm shut off from everybody. And this could save our planet. No interest whatsoever by Don Lincoln or Fermilab. And he's a government employee. I think that's not right at all. And I told him, I said, Don, you're not going to look good when this is done, buddy. He says, yeah, take your best shot. I said, okay. <laughs> I ain't going to like it.